Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to, to this session. In the previous session, we have uh, discussed the ba basic uh, concept of asymmetric information. Then we said that how asymmetric information leading to market failure and selection bias by using the examples of used car market. Uh, in this session, we will extend the discussion. We will see how this kind of market failure, asymmetric information and market failure uh, would happen in uh, various uh, different types of um, uh, finance markets. So, let us start with the how this would happen in individual uh, insurance market. So, individual insurance market for the sake of simplicity, let us take it uh, individual health insurance market. Uh, consider a situation uh, where people can purchase individual health insurance policy. So, in an individual uh, health insurance market, the problem for insurance companies is that they do not know who has the highest risk of health expenditure or what are the potential health risk of the potential purchaser or potential consumers or potential insurer. As compared to insurance companies, you know that uh, people themselves have an idea whether they are a high risk person or not. If you just think about yourself, whether uh, you are going to buy a health insurance or not, and if you not, you know the reason, right? Because you think that you are healthy and you think that the probability for or the propensity to consume healthcare products uh, in the next one year. Uh, may be very less. Your forecast is think that uh, you may not be needing any hospitalization. So, why would you simply buy a health insurance product, right? So, however, at the same time, if someone having any health risk or having seen that the way you, he or she is ha having a very chronic disease conditions and also anticipate that uh, he, is go he or she is going to get hospitalized and then the person will be more motiva motivated or incentivized to buy to purchase a health insurance product. So, why so simply here in this case what we have seen that between uh, insurance companies and prospective customers consumers uh, you can we can see that there is asymmetric information about the health risk. Health risk is the parameter where we we can see observe that there is uh, asymmetric information. Because of this, this asymmetric information, it can lead to market failure in insurance market. It can lead to uh, poor performance in private insurance market. So, let us explain and uh, let us discuss how uh, asymmetric information is going to lead to, uh, going to uh, result the poor performance or poor working of private insurance market. So, we introduced the concept called selection bias in the used car market case where we discuss the market will be over represented by uh, used car uh, that poor quality car that means at the end there will be only poor quality car and finally the used car market will collapse. So, here also the, the idea here the selection bias uh, which we discussed there with the proper definition for selection bias is that that actions by insurers and consumers to exploit unpriced risk heterogeneity that is the health risk and break pooling arrangement. So, actually when we talk about insurance, insurance means it is a pool of uh, high risk and risk pool of uh, people with a different risk that the high risk, medium risk, uh, low risk. So, it should be a mix of uh, all kinds of uh, risk involved. Suppose we see that in a society, for example, in any uh, country, for example, with a 1 billion population, 1 billion uh, population. Um, if we know that uh, actually 1 billion that the 100 crore, suppose we see that 1 crore is going to go need, crore is going to needing, 1 crore, 1 crore 
population needing a hospitaliza hospitalization in the next year then remaining 99 crore uh, crores won't need any hospitalization this is the based on uh, data about the hospitalization uh, probability hospitalization episodes we come to come up uh, this data for example so that means uh, in this you know that 1 crore is high risk population and 99 crores are low risk right so accordingly we know that uh, out of this only one percentage of the population is needing hospitalization so how an insurance company will underwrite uh, the policy uh, it will be based on this information that means only one percentage is requiring uh, hospitalization and remaining 99 they don't need right so if they assume that all the 101 billion a population uh, one, one billion entire population is joining the uh, insurance so they need to pay the claim only to this one percentage right so what they will do so they will be calculating the risk premium in a way that what will be the total expenditure for for example uh, this one crore one crore suppose uh, they will be needing for example 10 billion uh, 10 billion dollar uh, suppose 10 billion dollar uh, is the total health expenditure health expenditure uh, for this one crore population right you know that then the remaining for the 99 we already know that is going to be only in 0 billion that means 0 expenditure for uh, this 99 99 percentage so based on this what we can see that when they do the pricing you know that if their assumption is that all the 1 billion population will join the uh, policy and accordingly the total health expenditure is uh, 10 billion uh, 10 billion only 10 billion plus 0 billion so you know that is only 10 billion uh, that means 10 billion divided by the entire population that is 1 billion right so accordingly you know that uh, the risk premium is going to be uh, 10 dollar only for this policy right plus uh, this is the uh, premium calculated based on the risk profile uh, risk premium plus they will add the operating cost plus profit that also uh, include the profit as well suppose assuming that this one is 2 uh, the per, per unit policy uh, you can see that per person has to pay dollar 12 if you make this calculation to buy this uh, policy given this is the health risk profile of this population so this is the uh, overall scenario suppose actually you know that uh, not all this 1 billion population is going to join the program uh, the join the policy uh, not that actually this proportion that the 1 1 to 99 that the 1 percentage is uh, risky uh, high risk um, this uh, 99 is low risk uh, so this proportion that the 1 percentage uh, 1 uh, to 99 this proportion uh, even if not all the 1 billion is joining uh, even if 1 crore suppose uh, in the total pool if it is going to be 1 percentage is uh, low risk and uh, sorry high risk and 99 percentage is uh, low risk then is fine then this calculation which we came up here that the risk premium 10 and the loading cost or operating cost is uh, 2 then this calculation hold true but what is going to happen really in the market really in the market is that actually this won't be the case we know that uh, those who thinks that that a risk uh, because from the for the insurance company they cannot clearly identify out of this 1 billion or out of this entire population who we, who are this one percentage who is having high risk who are this 99 percentage population uh, who are ha having low risk that insurance company cannot directly identify those people but among this 1 billion you already know that people that uh, one percentage they most of them may be knowing that uh, about their health condition uh, that, that they are high risk population so this information asymmetry obviously we are going to see that uh, the 
actions by insurers and consumers, the potential consumers, they are going to exploit this unpriced uh, risk heterogeneity and as a result, we are going to see that this is going to result in break pooling arrangements. That the pooling means actually insurance means uh, this risk pooling, risk pooling that is risk of this low risk and high risk, this pooling together, then coming up with um, this way that uh, coming with uh, this insurance, this uh, uh, premium and selling the insurance product underwriting that um, selling the insurance product in the market this is actually a kind of uh, pooling arrangement risk pooling risk pooling means different types of risk and however as we discuss here that uh, if uh, but because of this information asymmetry um, because it, this would lead to uh, adverse selection problem that we are going to discuss shortly and another um, case actually insurers if they have some other kind of information if they do something else to overcome this adverse selection it would also lead to cream selection problem uh, let us see the case of adverse selection issue so suppose that when the risk pooling uh, is going to uh, over represented by a uh, high risk population suppose we saw that actually in this uh, population we know that one percentage is high risk and remaining 99 percentage is low risk but due to the information asymmetry we know that since the joining to insurance policy buying is a voluntary decision of prospective customers so you see that uh, if it is the those who are feeling that they need more healthcare pro consumption or they are going to fall sick and needing hospitalization uh, if they are going to join more suppose the red color smiley suppose they let us call them the high risk this is the high risk population high risk and uh, this um, uh, light blue color uh, we are going to see this is the low risk ideally it should be say that one percentage of um, high risk and 99 percentage of low risk uh, but actually what is going to happen that this market uh, is going to be over represented by uh, high risk people so in this case what you can see that when an insurance policy is sold out in the sold in the market and actually this market will be over represented by uh, high risk population that means high risk uh, customers so those who needing hospitalization so in this case because uh, here you can see that from this the figures here you can see that the smile is over represented by uh, high risk population so then the calculation which we made in the beginning that means the premium based on the uh, if profit representation is happening then we found that the premium is going to be dollar 12 only right but in this case we are going to see that our calculation uh, the 12 the premium 12 is not going to hold true so because of this you know that uh, because of this one uh, you know that uh, in the next circle when the insurance company is underwriting uh, the policy they know that this market actually over represented by uh, high risk population high risk uh, insurers insurers so as a result they will be redoing this calculation and the premium is going to increase and let us see this before going to that let us see this scenario what you can see that since individual themselves know uh, much about their health condition than insurance companies uh, people who insure themselves are those who are increasingly certain that they will need health insurance and buy more insurance as compared to uh, individuals who thinks that they do not need insurance as compared to low risk people uh, people uh, with, uh, with the high risk people you will get insurance coverage they will buy so those purchasing insurance are a non representative portion of the population right so this le lead to a situation of buying of health insurance by uh, high risk people and thus resulting of over representation of such high risk people in the pool now let's see if this scenario happens what is going to happen in this market now we know that the premium is uh, uh, once this happened the premium is not going to be this uh, $12 at all uh, this is going to increase this is going to for example the new premium may be for example based on this calculation the new premium for example uh, is going to be uh, 200 
So, in this uh, example, we know that though uh, it is over represented by uh, high risk population, we can also see uh, some low risk uh, population as well here. But if the premium increase, if it is premium because of this adverse selection, the companies will be uh, their new calculation suggests that the premium has to be increased accordingly. And when the premium increase, now let us see what is going to happen. So, when the premium increase, uh, some people for example, they, they think that is better you know, what is the point of giving 200. So, they eventually leave the market. Maybe when the renewal of this policy at that time, uh, those who did not use uh, health insurance coverage, uh, who did not make any claim, who know that they are healthy, uh, low risk, what they will do? They will think that they will eventually leave the market. When they leave the market, gradually when they leave the market, what is going to happen? You see, because of the adverse selection, the premium has increased and again uh, in the subsequent uh, circle, we are going to see that the market will be uh, over represented by uh, high risk people only. So, in this case, now if the insurance companies is going to do the underwriting due to the actuarial calculation, they are going to see that uh, this population actually only represented by this high risk and actually the premium will be the average of the total healthcare expenditure. Suppose the total healthcare expenditure here, uh, whatever we get, actually the premium is going to be uh, almost that the suppose the total healthcare expenditure is 10 billion. Um, uh, now, this will be represented by only for example, uh, 0 0.1 percent of uh, suppose 1 crore, 1 crore population. So, accordingly you now you know that actually the premium is going to be 1000, right, 1000 dollar. So, that means 1000 dollar will be the almost the average of the hospitalization expenses. So, in this case, the premium is almost equal to the average of uh, the hospitalization expenditure, then what is the point? Actually, this market is now only with them and what is the point? For example, the operating cost for this um, for each of the policy, the for example, then it is for example 10, uh, then is going to be uh, this much, right? Um, uh, this is going to be the new premium. So, uh, overall what you can see that this market, this is uh, now more with high, uh, high risk people and uh, you can see that this is nothing but adverse selection. So, what we are going to see that this kind of market will not exist, even this person also will leave, will think that why should I pay 1000 premium because uh, I am not using it, I do not I mean, I know, I don't need the insurance policy as such, I am uh, feeling myself healthy. So, this is actually will be more with unhealthy people that means uh, it is an adverse selection in uh, insurance market. Right. So, my, that means this market will collapse, this is called a kind of market failure in insurance market. And in order to overcome this, uh, you know sometimes insurance companies, they will give uh, insurance coverage, uh, they will do a cherry picking, they will exclude, they will make it clear that those who with uh, previous uh, health histories, health problems, hospitalization episodes, uh, those who have been hospitalized earlier. Uh, those who are having chronic diseases like uh, for example, heart disease or having some chronic risk factors like uh, diabetes, hypertension, uh, they will not be given and more or less, more, not only that and if they say that they are not going to give uh, insurance coverage to, if they deny insurance coverage to older people, elderly, uh, elder population and they only give insurance coverage to for example, those with the uh, age group of for example, 18 to uh, 40 or 45 for example, if they limit it of maybe for example, 40 this also suppose with another premium uh, for example, 55 suppose, suppose they give only to uh, low risk population then you can see that uh, this market will be, they will be cherry picking, they actually deny insurance coverage to uh, unhealthy population and those for example, elderly because elderly once you grow old you know that after certain years your health stocks start uh, deteriorating, then you need to restore your health, you need more consumption of healthcare products, uh, healthcare expenditure increase, right. So, that means age is a uh, indicator for screening, right, age is a indicator for screening uh, to identify that a senior elder, elder population is uh, high risk, 
and similarly those who had earlier health expenditure uh, hospitalization episodes and with a chronic disease uh, disease condition and they will be excluded and this market will be over represented by cream selection this is another case of uh, market failure here also actually the purpose is not being served is only with the low risk population so the cream selection the definition for this one is the practice of excluding the unhealthy and sick from the insurance coverage by insurers so the solution here is actually compulsory universal coverage that means government come up with the, the regulation that there should be compulsory uh, universal coverage So, because of this asymmetric information, we said that the market failure happened. Actually, there are mainly two types of market failure happen. One is the adverse selection, which we already discussed. This another one is moral hazard issue, which we will discuss in some of the next uh, session. So, actually, this issue can be better understood by agency theory, which analyzes uh, how asymmetric information problems affect economic behavior. So the point which we discussed, the selection problem or the adverse selection uh, occurs before a transaction occurs, before is a ex ante outcome. So before a transaction occurs, then that there actually the adverse selection occurs. And the second concept that the, um, another kind of market failure due to asymmetric information that is arises after the transaction has developed transaction has settled so after that so this part as i mentioned we will be discussing in length in the next section so let us continue uh, this adverse selection the first part of the market failure problem let us now see how uh, adverse selection influences the financial structure so if quality cannot be assessed so this adverse selection let us also call it as lemon problems that is low quality car example so is uh, popularly known as lemons problem the adverse selection problem uh, if quality cannot be assessed the quality of for example the quality of bonds the quality of stocks uh, it cannot be assessed the buyer is willing to pay at a more at a at most a price that reflects the average quality and sellers of good quality items will not want to sell at the price for average quality right and then uh, the buyers will decide uh, not to buy at all because all that is left in the market is of is poor quality items that's what we have seen uh, by taking by discussing the examples of used car so this problem so we what we can see that in the market it will be whatever is left in the market uh, this is only going to be the poor quality items so that means in the market um, between buyers and sellers if it happen for example bonds um, stocks and insurance product which that also we had discussed uh, th then we are going to see that uh, if adverse selection problem is there uh, because of the asymmetric information uh, that's a reality asymmetric information because of that because of this uh, asymmetric information that is leading to adverse selection or lemons problem uh, it explains fact number two and partially explain fact number one which we discussed so what is fact number two issuing marketable debt and equity securities uh, is not the primary way in which businesses finance their operations and fact number one is stocks are not the most important sources of external financing uh, for businesses so in this case what you can see for example fact number two and fact number one look at for example on the supply side of stock or bonds so let us for example look at the supply side of stock so due to asymmetric information some good companies uh, may be afraid that stock might not get its full economic price so the companies with the strong economic fundamentals having a strong uh, good financial project uh, who is also going to see that their project is going to be a great success and going to earn huge profit and accordingly they expect that um, they expect a high IPO the unit price of their share they are expecting a high amount but because of the asymmetric information uh, because the prospective buyers of their stock may not be knowing whether this company is uh, in good financial condition or they are in a low risk or a low risk or not uh, the prospective buyers may not be knowing. So, as buyers of the IPO cannot distinguish the quality of the companies. So, here clearly what we are going to see that as the 
prospective buyers cannot clearly know which firm is of is good quality somebody is uh, two three two firms suppose uh, not uh, not only two many firms when they are issuing ipo uh, if the buyers cannot clearly distinguish uh, which company is of good quality uh, which is the peach and which is the lemon if they cannot distinguish you know that they are going to pay only the average of quality price and eventually you also know that here this market will be overrepresented by Uh, low quality because good quality companies uh, they want the high ipo the high amount of high rate of ipo that uh, price for their stock but they won't be getting it similarly bond also the same issue there may be the uh, companies who is borrowing from the market those with uh, good economic fundamentals and with good business prospects uh, may not be able to they actually expect that when lower the risk we have discussed in uh, discussed in the previous session that those who have low risk that means high quality firms they should be able to borrow at low interest rate from the market but that won't happen because of asymmetric information so let us see this issue apply this one in the other market lemons lemons in the stock market and uh, also let us apply this concept in the bond market as well so here uh, see this fact we are actually elaborating this fact uh, in the uh, stock market Uh, discuss in the context of stock market and bond market so in the lemons stock market what is going to happen so you know that good firms who who are the, those we can call them peach they have high expected profit and low risk and bad firms that is lemons you know that they have low uh, expected profit and high risk so you know that the investors willingness to pay uh, is going to be the price of the average quality then what's going to happen in this market because of asymmetric information uh, you know that managers of good firms know more about their firm than the potential investors right so since as the managers of good firms know more about their firm uh, than investors so the firm with the, the good firms they have less willingness to accept the average price for their stock that like is the ipos they are not willing to accept the average price the price for the average quality uh, because the investors willingness to pay will be the uh, average of both that we have already seen in the previous discussion so what is going to happen at the same time this is about the managers of good firms that means high quality firms how about the low quality firms that means about the lemons uh, you can see that the bad firms they are in fact happy with the average quality price you know why because obviously they are getting more than they actually deserve so this is the case since that the with all is happen because of the asymmetric information then how about the investors they do not want to buy stock of bad firms obviously right you know that uh, they want to earn dividend and they also want to see uh, earn capital gain in the days in the future uh, so they do not want to buy the stock of bad firms so they end up with actually they do not want to buy the stock of bad firms so actually this market it will be over represented by it will be more with the bad firms this market is going to be only with the bad firm that is nothing but the point that we mentioned adverse selection uh, in the a uh, stock stock market adverse selection in the uh, equ equity market is better to call it as equity market uh, uh, because stock means uh, we already said that transaction in the already uh, secondary market so this you can say is the equity market so in the equity market you can say that uh, there's only there's going to happen adverse selection is going to happen that means the collapse of equity market because um, i uh, investors finally because it will be overrepresented by bad firms uh, then investors they do not want to uh, buy the ipos of um, bad quality firms uh, share in the next session we'll continue this discussion and at that time we'll discuss also apply the lemons in bond markets thank you